Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to explain the concept of software testing terminology and methodology. So earlier we have seen that what are the different objectives of uh, this particular topic. So we will discuss the uh, difference between error, fault and failure. Then life cycle of a bug, how bug affects economics of software testing, then how bug, uh, bugs are classified, testing principle, software testing life cycle and its mo models, difference between validation and verification and development of software testing methodology. So initially we start with failure. So what is failure? This is the inability of system or component to perform a required function according to its specification. OK, so this is the definition of uh, failure and. With uh, you can also say that uh, with when a result or behavior of the system under test are different as compared to. Say expectation, so. Uh, difference of expectation and the output is also known as failure. OK, so failure is the difference between expectation and the output. So. Um, now the detect uh, defect or bug. So here inputs are given and bugs are also present. Bugs are just uh, logical error presented in program or some sort of errors which we are not able to uh, see due to the uh, written code and this will ultimately cause the failure. So let us uh, talk about fault. So fault is a condition that causes the program to produce failure. OK, it can be said that failures are manifestation of bug. Fault is a condition that actually causes a system to produce failure. A fault is also synonymous with uh, word defect or bug. OK, so whenever we are talking about fault, fault is uh, alternatively you can call it as defect or bug. So fault is the reason embedded in any phase of life cycle and result in failure. It can be said that failure are manifestation of bug. OK, uh, one failure may be due to one or more bugs. And one bug, one or more failures. Thus, when bug is executed, then failures are generated. But this is not always true. When bug is executed, then failures are generated. OK, so this particular thing is not always true. Some bugs are hidden in the sense that they are not executed as they do not get the required condition in the system when we are going to test. So hidden bugs may not always produce failures. Uh, they may execute only in certain uh, rare conditions. OK, now come to errors. So error. Whenever a development uh, team member makes a mistake in any phase of SDLC, errors are produced. OK, so errors may be the part of the software development lifecycle. This is simple waterfall model. OK. So it can be an at any state here you can produce error here also. So this is planning development or whatever model you are using because there are a lot of models. So errors can occur at different different phases of life cycle. OK, and that is software development life cycle. Fine. It might be a typographical error to typography. OK, typographical error. A misleading uh, means typographical error, a misleading specification, a misunderstanding of what subroutine does and so on. Thus error is a very general term used for human mistakes. Fine. So errors. Are the major cause of bugs will create the failures. So the simple thing and we have already uh, shown one case that when we are writing any program, suppose I am writing a module A. OK, this is a module. A and we have defined so many lines of code and then we execute while. A is greater than N plus one. OK, and then the several other statements and print statement is also given and this print statement will print some values 
the value of a is okay but this program will not execute as you uh, are very sure about suppose i am writing printf also so because in this while loop we have given semicolon it may, it may happen because we are writing so many line of code and due to that line of code we are having a very great practice of writing semicolon and that's why this type of error may be occur whenever we are running this key condition it will execute this statement but it will not produce anything inside this okay anything inside this will not be produced by the um, our program fine so this is very is small kind of bug or error uh, human eye is not able to check whether a semicolon is there or not now come to test case it is a well documented procedure designed to test the functionality of features in the system the test case has an identity and associated with program behavior so the primary purpose uh, purpose of designing a test case is to find error in the system. A test case needs to specify a set of input and corresponding expected output. So simple test cases, test case ID is given. Um, and uh, purpose is given, preconditions are also given. And so many other things are given. So give me one second. So we have seen uh, in a previous class that there is test case ID. OK, test case ID may be any number associated with this. This may be combination of line number and uh, uh, page number. OK, then purpose of this test case ID precondition and input and expected output. So I had shown you that how Coursera will uh, generate the test cases and test cases are the uh, simple thing. Like I have already seen in our practical uh, classes also of batch one so they know what is test case purpose and precondition and input and expected output so if the expected output does not match then there will be um, difference between expected output and actual output okay so what is error actually error is the difference between errors is the difference between expected output okay expected output and the actual output so this will cause cause the error fine. So uh, let us see. So we have also uh, seen the case of Coursera. There is one program there. There are some numbers and we have put like input as one, two, three, four and then minus one. As soon as minus one will be entered, it will automatically terminate this line and it will generate one message four and uh, 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 4, uh, 10, 10 divided by um, 4 is 2.5. So this will give you the total uh, number of uh, inputs and what will be the average of all these numbers. So this is expected and sometimes what happened due to a wrong interpretation, it will generate like this. OK, it will generate like this. So we need to check why this output is why this difference is there fine now come to software testing terminology so we have already uh, also uh, shown the terminology like testware incident and the test oracle fine so what is testware the documents created during testing activities taking the analogy from software and hardware as a product, testware is also uh, defined as product and they are document. Um, they are the document that test engineer produce. OK, it produced by the test engineer. It may include test plan. What are the different thing? It may include test plan. Fine. 
in the test where test plan is there. Then test specification is there fine and uh, test case design test reports. There are several other important things are associated with test where now come to incident. So test uh, uh, test where documents uh, should also be managed and updated like a software program. So like whenever there is a change, OK, there is a change uh, means change, then it will automatically update update upon change update upon change. Fine. Now come to incidents. So incident when a failure occur it may or may not be uh, readily apparent to the users. So the incident is the symptoms associated with a failure and uh, that alerts the user about occurrence of failure. So incident is actually for test engineer. What is incident for test engineer? Incident is why this is not work. OK, or test engineer incident is failure. So this you must know then come to text Oracle. Orator and Oracle is very important. It is kind of guru. So an Oracle is means to judge the success or failure. OK, it will judge the success or failure. Fine. It will judge the success or failure. That is to judge the correctness of the system for some test. The simplest oracle is comparing actual result with the expected result by hand. OK. And uh, this can be very time consuming, so automated oracles are sought. We are. Uh, we are basically seeking for the automated oracle. OK, so manual. Process. Very time consuming. OK, so. Some abrupt behavior is shown by this system. Fine. Now come to so test where is the document. And uh, there are uh, so many documents like test plan. Test design. Test specification. And then test. Uh, um, test reports, OK. And so on. An incident is basically failure. The major uh, task of. If a software is free from all failure, then there is no use of test engineer. OK, so failures may be in code. In design. In UI. Anywhere failures can occur, OK, so the engineers can map this and this test oracle is. Um, guru or judge that judge the difference between actual output. And. The expected output. Fine, so this will be judged by the test oracle and there are two different schools of test oracles. One is automated. And one is manual. Manual test oracle and automated. Test oracle manual will take huge amount of time. And it will take moderate. 
to less. Okay, so the persons are always uh, seeking for um, such kind of test oracle. Now come to life cycle of a bug. So this is the life cycle of a bug. So this is our um, life cycle of bug and we know that how it is working. OK, it should be very clear that any member of development team can make an error in any phase of software development life cycle as discussed previously. If an error is produced in the requirement specification phase and do not detect it in the same time. OK, uh, same time and in the same phase, then it result in bug in the next phase. Fine. So first thing is whenever specification phase is uh, going on. OK, so requirement gathering and a specification phase is there and there is an error. Fine, something we committed that we can do it, but the software is also not able to do and uh, the programmer is also not able to do this. Then this type of error will um, forward it to the next step. And that is the design phase in design phase a bug has uh, come from previous stage, but an error can also be produced in this stage because a wrong specification is given. OK, and due to this wrong specification, wrong design will be produced. Fine. Again, a bug in this uh, particular phase is not detected and it passes to the next stage and that is our coding phase and then it becomes a bug. OK, so in this way, errors and bugs appear and travel through various stages of uh, software development life cycle. So one can say that one stage may contain errors as well as bugs and the bug which come from previous stage are harder to detect and debug. So if bug is coming from previous stage, OK, we don't know we are working on whatever specification is given to us. We design accordingly and some bugs are also because of misunderstanding and misleading specification. We design um, that thing and we and in this design we also included one error. OK, one error. Then again it will uh, cause the error in next coding phase and obviously it will uh, if the coding phase, the person of coding phase is unable to detect the error in design and requirement phase. Even he or she can see that uh, the design, there may be error related with design, but it is very, very difficult. OK, so in the testing phase. We analyze OK, we analyze what we need to analyze incidents. Fine. We analyze the incident when failure occurs on the basis of symptoms. OK, so whenever uh, failure is there, OK, failure. Failure is there. So. Yes, any doubt. Incidents are coming and. Because we are detecting something, so these are known as symptoms. OK. Instead of writing characteristics, we are writing symptoms. Fine. Derived from the incident, a bug can be classified into certain categories. After this, the bug can be isolated in the corresponding phase. OK, uh, what kind of uh, uh, so we list them phase wise. OK. Uh, uh, phase of life cycle and resolved by the uh, resolved by finding its exact location. OK. So we are finding the location at which stage it uh, look, uh, location at which stage like it can be in requirement gathering state. OK, it can be in design. It can be in coding. 
fine. So the uh, whole cycle of bugs can be classified into two phases. Fine, bug in phase and bug out phase. Fine. So this is our bug in phase, first phase. Bug classification. Okay, it is uh, fine. And then second phase is our bug out classification, uh, bug out phase. So bug in phase. What is this? This phase is uh, where the errors and bugs are introduced in the software. Whenever we commit a mistake, it creates error on the specific location of software. And consequently, when this error goes unnoticed, it causes some condition to fail, leading to a bug in the software. The bug is carried out to the subsequent phases of life cycle if not detected. Therefore, a phase may have its own error as well as bug received from the previous phase. So if you are not performing verification, OK, we will discuss it later on earlier phases. OK, verification and validation validations are very important. Then there is no chance of detecting these bugs. So V and V. OK, we will discuss in next slide also. Then come to bug out phase. If failure occurs while testing a software product, OK, the first one is occurs when introduced in software it is introduced in software now when testing a software product testing a software product fine at that time of uh, point, we come to conclusion that it is affected by bugs. However, there are situations when bugs are present even though we don't observe any failures. That is another issue of discussion. Fine. So in particular, uh, in this particular phase, when we observe failures, then uh, there are different activities we need to perform. First is classify the bug. Second is isolate the bug and third is the uh, resolve the bug. OK, so first one is bug classification. In this part, we observe the failures and classify the bugs according to its nature. So we will see later on. These are the states of bug and uh, these are the. Classification of bug, so we will discuss in detail. Fine. So a bug can be critical or catastrophic. Catastrophic means certainly power goes off. OK, so it may have no adverse effect, but on the output behavior of the software. And uh, in this way, we classify all failures. This is necessary because there may be uh, many bugs to be resolved, but a tester may not have sufficient time and therefore categorization of bug may help by hand, uh, handling high critically bugs first and considering other trivial kind of bugs later fine if time permits we have taken uh, various consideration to classify different kind of bugs then come to this this phase is over now come to isolate the bug so bug isolation is the activity by which we locate the module in which the bug appears. OK, so modules are located. Incidents observed in failures help in this activity. So basically whenever we are talking about errors or bugs, so incidents must be there. Fine. We observe the symptoms and backtrace the design of the software and reach the module files and the condition inside it. Which has caused the bug. <clears throat> this is very similar like uh, whenever uh, you lost something and you are finding that. So you are uh, trying to remind yourself that what was the last point where I had moved. OK, when you have to go to the next point, you have to go to the next point. 
वो सारी चीजें याद करोगे कि कहां कहां गए थे और एक के बाद एक बैक ट्रैक करते हैं ठीक है सो so, और बैक ट्रैक करने के बाद आप उसको ढूंढने की कोशिश करते हैं सो दैट सिम्टम्स एंड बैक ट्रेस एंड डिजाइन ऑफ द सॉफ्टवेयर एंड रीच द मॉड्यूल फाइल्स एंड अदर कंडीशन इन साइड इन विच इट हैज कॉज द बग and this is known as bug isolation now come to bug resolution okay so this is the third phase bug resolution once we have isolated the bug we backtrace the design to pinpoint the location of error in this way a bug resolved when we have found the exact location of its occurrence so we are trying to find the exact location of that bug fine now come to states of bug so we have a process diagram also now come to state of bug first state is new this is our very first state the state is new when the bug is reported first time by a tester bug is reported first time by a tester okay then open the new state does not verify the bug is genuine when the test leader approves that bug is genuine then is it means once this is approved okay this is approved by the test lead we will uh, show you when this unit is coming okay this is very uh, later kind of unit it will appear in fourth or fifth unit maybe now come to assign as soon as we found uh, we have detected the new bug it is coming into open status means now bug is available and we need to find that bug and then this is a sign so one open bug comes to the development team okay this open bug is coming into development team where the development team verifies its validity verify its validity if bug is valid a developer is assigned to the job to fix and the state of bug is uh, now it is assigned okay so verify okay verify the validity and this will assign to development team fine then next is after assigning them there are um, deferred and rejected two different things are there deferred and not defer uh, what exactly pronounce it as deferred is okay fine not an issue the developer who has been assigned to fix the bug will check its validity and priority okay first of all it will be checked for its validity and priority if the priority of the reported bug is not very high or there is not sufficient time to test it okay or the bug does not have any adverse effect on the system or software then the bug is changed to deferred state which implies that bug is expected to be fixed in next release okay to be fixed in next release like sometime heating in android system heating okay battery draining okay these are some bugs so we can improve that in next uh, update now come to rejected it may be possible that the developer rejects a bug after checking its validity it is not a genuine one if it is not genuine okay not genuine bug whatever design specification given 
by the designer to the software developer and the software developer designed according to that uh, specification, then it is known as genuine, uh, not genuine. Means if it is, uh, they are treating the test engineer, treating them as a bug, but it is not treating bug by the developer team, then it is rejected, okay? Then come to test. So this phase is over, now test phase is. After fixing the valid bugs, the developer send it back to the testing team for the next round of checking before releasing to the. Uh, actually, it is for testing by the their developer team. OK, so before uh, that. Uh, before releasing to the testing team, the developer changes the bug state to test once again. It specifies that the bug has been fixed by the development team, but not tested and released to the testing team and then verified or fixed. Now the same process will start. OK, before this. Testing is. One of the phases, so test will detect a new uh, incident. And based on this incident, it will <coughs> on and after opening the dedicated team will be assigned by the test lead, OK? And then it is deferred or rejected based on this. Once again, if it is deferred, then it will be developed once again. The code will be developed or modified once again and sent back to testing. Then come to verified and fix. The tester tests the software and verifies whether the reported bugs are fixed or not. If it is fixed, after verifying the developer approves the bug is fixed, and change to verified status. OK, so now OK seal is given to that particular code and then. There may be possibilities of reopen the case when if it is not working. Correctly, it is working for 60% cases. OK, but not 40% cases. Uh, OK, fine. So for this particular purpose, reopened is there if the bug is still there even after fixing it the tester changes its status to reopen the bug travels the life cycle once again in another case a bug which has been closed earlier may be reopened if it appears again in this case the status will be reopened instead of open so now this will moving inside this circle okay So this is how reopen the cases. Now we need to close this anyhow. So once the tester and other team members are confirmed that bug is completely eliminated. Bug is. Completely. Eliminated. Then. They change its status to close, OK? So this is the status uh, states of different states of a bug. New open assign test verified close. OK, and in the assign and test there are. Different phases also in assign. It may be deferred or it may be rejected while in case of test. If it is not giving the exact output, whatever we are expecting, then it is uh, sent back to reopen fine. So how the economies of software testing affected by the bugs? In case of specification, OK, SDLC faces, still there is chance to no effect at all. And after that, uh, high level language 
low level deployment code unit test hll uh, what is hll actually this diagram is taken from internet fine so at the development phase fine in the coding phase cost of debugging is actually whenever we are different phases of life cycle up to coding phase it is very less but after unit test unit test shows it is also not very high but uh, during integration test it may touch to this portion and then during system test it slightly increases the cost and after delivery the cost of bug uh, debugging uh, increases exponentially fine so it is much better if we have started debugging at the specification phase itself so now you can have a question why do bug occur so there may be different uh, answers like uh, errors are produced when developer commit mistake sample this phone uh, rang while coding fine and developer got distracted he pressed the wrong key and result of the mistake produced a bug in the system but this is not the only reason for the bug. Like uh, today you have seen that so many times I had passed myself due to different calls. OK, now second thing is bugs in earlier stages go undetected and propagate. so first thing is like this phone call. sometimes it is very important to take the phone call okay and sometimes it, it is not and after coming from phone call then I certainly ask the student Kaha te hum bataiye, hai na? so this type of thing may occur with the human also uh, like software developer is coding and uh, certainly phone rings and he uh, attend the call and after attending the call he has mistyped something then uh, this type of but this is not only point of error bugs in earlier stages to uh, means uh, go undetected and propagate so the phase of sdlc are connected to each other and the output of one phase becomes input of the next you know very well therefore an undetected bug easily propagate into subsequent phases these propagated bugs in later phase are harder to detect if found and these are very costlier to debug as we have seen in this particular diagram fine it is proven fact that requirement specification and design phases contain the largest percentage of bug. So first thing is requirement. If we draw the diagram, OK, if we draw, draw the another graph, so suppose RQ empty requirement and then uh, next uh, phase. <coughs> Sorry. So next is design. And design. So these consist of a larger amount of bugs. OK, and this is our bug. So this is fact that a very high amount of bug is propagated here only. 
now come to uh, this point also establishes the fact that testing should be performed at each level of software development life cycle errors are inevitable however we can prevent critical bugs from propagating into later stage by checking minute details at each level of stlc so how uh, means there are some examples like miscommunication in gathering requirement from the customer is a big source of bugs whenever we are not giving a proper time to customer to explain their thought and we are just saying that yes 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 we can do okay we have already done we have done for that customer so it is not very good thing then if the requirement keep changing from time to time like customer is saying no 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 uh, I, I I don't want blue color. I want red color. OK, and then after that, oh, no, no, no. Yellow is OK. So it creates a lot of confusion and pressure both on the development as well as the testing team. Often a new feature added like uh, OK, open is uh, vanished. Now open is known as uh, uh, unbox. OK, so this type of thing may also disturb the or distract the team. So new feature a feature is added or existing feature removed can be linked to other modules or components in the software. If the effect of change in one module to another module is overlooked, it causes a bug. Then there are uh, another issue like rescheduling of resources, redoing or dis, uh, discarding an already completed work. OK, we have already done a lot of effort to that work and it is discarded and change in the hardware and software requirement can affect the software signing new developer to the project midway can also can be a big cause of bug a proper coding standard have not been followed then new developer might not get all the relevant details of the project improper code documentation and ineffective knowledge transfer can limit the developers ability to produce error free codes. Discarding a portion of software or existing code might just leave the trial behind other parts of the software. So overlooking is not eliminating such code can cause bugs and serious bugs can especially occur when larger projects are there and as it gets tougher to identify the problem area and then finally come to so rescheduling and after that complexity in keeping a track of all the bugs can in turn cause more bugs. This gets harder when a bug has very complex life cycle. That is when the number of times it has been closed, reopened and not accepted, uh, ignored, etc. goes on increasing. Fine. Then bug classification based on criticality. First thing is critical bug. This type of bug has worst effect as a stop or hangs the normal functioning of the software. So how this comes, the person using the software becomes helpless when this type of bug appears like a sorting program after providing the input numbers, the system hangs and need to be reset OK sorting a lot of operations are there fine. Suppose I am talking about bubble sort if 100. Numbers are there. And multiplied by 100 are there OK and this is one four times geo comparisons are there and these comparisons two are based on if else OK and there is call of routine swap. And this will take a huge amount of time and that's why uh, this is just example. It, it, it is not nowadays. It is not a critical thing. Then come to major bug. This type of bug does not stop the functioning of software, but it causes a functionality to fail to meet the like in a sorting program. The output is being displayed, but not correct one. OK, the output is displayed, but it is not correct. Now come to medium bug. Medium bugs are less critical in nature. 
have to predict if the outputs are not according to the standards or conventions like redundant or truncated output bug is media okay and all the hundred numbers are written in uh, lines so we are unable to see form i mod 10 calculation i mod 10 will print the 10 number and after that we print slash n okay so first 10 number is given next 10 next 10 so it will give me a readability of that output so this is done of media uh, this is uh, a kind of medium bug and now come to a minor bug these type of bugs are just mild bugs which occur without any effect on the expected behavior or continuity of the software like typographical error or miss uh, print out so like first some for finding the average of different uh, rupees item okay this can be displayed in two point two point okay so we need to write percent point two f but we have forgot to write this and that's why the four point six point eight eight point uh, type of uh, these are the four different kind of bug criticals are very serious bug and the, it uh, it actually changing the behavior of program major bug is also not giving correct output medium bug is um, also critical but not as and, and then minor bugs so alignment misalignment sort of output now come bug classification okay, based on different phases of bug life cycle so first check the first hierarchy so requirement and specification bug design bug coding bug interface and integration okay you just remember this term after coding interface and integration is coming then system bug whatever system you have created and then testing bug so let us discuss each one. First one is requirement and specification bug. This is very um, means uh, entry level kind of bug. First type of bug in uh, SDLC in the requirement gathering and specification. It has been observed. The most of the bugs appear in this phase only. So actually. Most of the I don't know who is uh, sitting in most of the bugs are found there because they are interpreting they are just trying to capture the uh, requirement of customer and uh, get the assignment okay if assignment is there then uh, our job is also secured if these bugs go undetected and propagate into subsequent phase that is designing phase so requirement gathering and specification is difficult phase in the sense that requirement gathered from the customer are to be converted into requirement specification or SRS document which will become the phase for design. There may be possibilities that requirement specification are not exactly what the customer want and moreover a specified requirement may be incomplete, ambiguous, inconsistent, specification problems uh, leads to wrong or uh, missing or bad means the features are not up to the mark okay so there are uh, so we need to concentrate or focus on this phase first and if this phase is okay and it is under because uh, actually in customers mindset also they are trying to say that we want to develop a software which will which is looking like that okay and we are saying oh yes i know that software we have developed that software we will design and we will even do better for you so these are just promises 
Now come to design bugs. So it may be the bugs from previous phase and addition to those errors which are introduced in the present phase. So there are different design errors. OK, design bugs are a different kind of. So we must focus on this. This is also most fine. Critical phase design phase. First is control flow. If we are designing if then else program fine. So like this is A is greater than B and then. Again, A is greater than C is coming fine. And if I'm writing that A is greater, C is greater and then B is greater. OK, so this is not anywhere in the flow and it will give us a wrong output. So that thing is also very, very important while designing uh, while um, uh, designing the control flow. So if we look at the control flow of a program, OK, then there may be many errors. For example, some paths through the flow may be missing and there may be unreachable paths, etc. OK, so this is actually missing path. Why missing? Because we have not written anything about else part. If else is there, OK, if else is there, then we need to write that whether B is greater than C or not, and then it will produce B is greater. OK. Uh, else will produce B is C, then it will generate B and C as different output. So we need to write correct control flow, then logic bugs. This is control flow bug, then come to logic bugs. Any type of logical mistake made in the design is logical bug, like uh, improper layout of cases, missing cases, improper combination of cases, misunderstanding of semantics of the order in which Boolean expression is evaluated. So whenever actually this is uh, this flow is also coming under logic. OK, control flow is control flow. This is the order which we want to produce, but this is very limited uh, specification or very limited design. And in this limited design, you can see if we discard this particular thing, then it will definitely produce the logical bugs. A divided by B is also a kind of logical bug. Then come to processing bug. Any type of computation mistake result in processing bug. Like arithmetic error, OK? So in this processing, we have taken two integer a, b, and we are calculating a divided by b. OK, so this will definitely produce error if it is integer type. It will always generate the whole number, but it will not generate the fractional part of this uh, calculation. So for this purpose, we need to mm, uh, check. OK. Arithmetic error, incorrect conversion from one data representation to another, ignoring overflow, improper use of logical operator, etc. Then data flow bug. Control flow cannot identify data flow errors. For this, we use data flow. OK, there may be data flow anomaly errors like an uninitialized data initialized in wrong format, data initialized but not used, data used but not initialized, refined without any intermediate use and so many other cases are there. Now error handling bug, error handling bugs. OK, there may be errors about errors. Handling in the software. There are situations in the system when exception handling mechanism must be adopted. If the system fails, then there must be an error message or system should handle the error in an appropriate way. If you forget to do this, this will cause a big error. Then error handling bugs appear. OK, so like if A divided by B and if B is given as 0, OK, B is given as 0, then we will produce an exception. OK, whenever B is equals to 0, then it will generate an error. That denominator is equals to zero, we cannot produce the answer. Then come to race condition bugs. Race condition bugs are also lead uh, to bugs. Sometimes uh, these bugs are in uh, producible. OK, like uh, sometimes it generating output one, sometimes two. OK, with the same set of input. So these are the race condition bugs. 
than boundary related bugs. Most of the time designers forget to take into consideration what will happen if aspect of program goes beyond its minimum and maximum value. OK, like mobile number. In Google Sheet, I am ex accepting number. OK, I had just uh, written this as name and mobile number. OK, and I had not given the range. So user can enter any number and that's why the number. So I had ne I, I need to write the number as it must be between between six. Four times zero and five times zero. Two. Five times nine and five times nine. OK, so this will capture my correct mobile number. Although it may be included the different uh, states code also, but a uh, major possibility is that we have uh, accepted the correct mobile number. User interface bug. There may be some design bugs that are related to user. If the user does not feel good while using the software, then there are user interface bugs. OK, so feel good is not coming. OK, then this type of bugs are there and. Uh, so for this we will finish. This two kind of we have completed two kind of bugs. We will discuss all four kind of bugs tomorrow. Fine, so I think this is sufficient for today. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Have a great time. Any doubt you can ask. Anybody is there in class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so if you yes, sir. No, no. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have doubt, you can ask. If you have no doubt, just say no doubt. It is fine. No doubt, sir. OK, thank you. No doubt, so, sir. Fine, fine. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.